One, one of the last things I want to talk about in the general sense, I want to talk about climate change, because that's another big one that we hear everything about. And I'm not going to get in a big argument, I'm just going to point out a few facts. Fact number one, an ice age ended 12,000 years ago. Fact number two, oceans were 300 feet shallower then. They have risen 300 feet in 12,000 years. That's a fact. That's one meter every 100 years. That's a fact if you average it out. What the environmental community says is in 100 years we will have one meter deep ocean going up one meter. Yep, been the average for 12,000 years. There were periods where it happened really fast, and there were periods where it happened really slow. All of those communities that used to exist are under the ocean. Look at the latest archaeology on what they're finding under the ocean from 300 feet up. The culture that went away. The one that died a long time ago. They just found in Turkey evidence of a high culture from 12,000 years ago that wasn't supposed to be there. Look around. Things have been changing a very long time. When you think about the oceans heating, and they use this, the solar radiation is doing it, it violates the laws of physics. Let me tell you why. When solar radiation hits the surface of the ocean, 97% of the energy is reflected off, and only about 3% of that energy is absorbed in the form of heat. And it stays right there on the surface because you can jump in the ocean anywhere in the world, and as soon as you drop, even a couple feet, the temperature starts dropping. It gets colder and colder and colder. Because heat rises, it doesn't sink. So how do you get, when you look at those satellite maps of the South Pacific, and you see these big plumes of energy coming out of the ocean and spreading out, that doesn't work from solar radiation. That does work from undersea volcanics. Because then 100% of the energy in the form of heat is absorbed in the ocean, and it comes up in a small amount and then drifts into a plume. And this is when atmospheric physicists do not talk to volcanologists who don't talk to oceanographers who don't monitor what's going on under the seas because we don't. That's your heat source. Three-fifths of the world is covered by oceans. Look at where all the volcanoes are. And then you can see them under the sea because they have the topography now. You can see where they all are. They're huge. They're big. They're everywhere. And we're not watching any of them. And when they dump the heat, the heat heats up. Now, there was a time in the 80s, maybe it was the 90s, where we had 15 degree temperature increases in our part of our state. And they said, we can't understand this. We can't understand this at all. Well, it's easy to understand if you put this into the equation. And then somebody could have went and looked for it because it had to be a source of heat coming from under the sea to be absorbed into the sea or it would just be on the surface. And it wasn't. Think about it. Heat goes up, cold goes down. It's, it's impossible to do it the way they're telling us it was done. Ozone depletion. You know, every time we launch a satellite, we deplete ozone. For a huge area, none of that was factored in. At the time I wrote, over 20 years ago, 3,000 rockets responsible for ozone depletion. The first time we noticed it was when we launched Skylab all those decades ago. And it made a big hole in the ozone layer, but after a number of hours, everything was cool. It filled back in. So, okay, that's all good. No, it isn't. It's like taking a rock and throwing it in a pond. It makes a little bit of space for a couple seconds, fills back in. Yeah, okay, maybe that works. Maybe that's true. But if you actually change the chemistry and the ozone's not there, the only thing that happens is other ozone fills out at a thinner level, which explains ozone depletion over time, right? Okay, so there's more to it than what meets the eye. The, the refrigerant units, the refrigeration units that they blamed, those are heavier than air. They sink. They don't go up either. Methane does. Methane is released from tundra, heating up, which it's been doing, I might mention,
for ten years. Where we're sitting, there used to be about a mile of ice above my head 4,000 years ago. It's gone. There wasn't any cars running when it left, <laughs> I can promise. And it wasn't here 150 years ago, I can promise. But there was a lot of ice around here that you can see in those old images, because 40% of the glaciers have gone away in recent time of what was here then, from then to now. What you're not considering is what was there before to then. And that's where the big heat happened, and it wasn't in the last 150 years. What I would say is the same is true. Start analyzing the motion and the, and the position of what people are doing with all of their information today. Climate change is a big one. If you want to get funding in the world, you better put climate change in it if you're involved in science, because then you'll get the money. But if you're going to be critical of the science, you won't get anything. But if you look at BBC's work on this before it was trendy not to have the opinion, they did do a story. And what they said is very accurate, that if you look at the solar cycle and climate change, there's a bit of a lag, but they run just like that. If you think that it was man, then you would think that from World War II on, it would have been really nasty what we were doing, because a lot of industrialization happened, most of it. And you know, temperatures continued to drop until the mid-80s but they don't report that either. They weren't going up then, they were going down. These things cycle, I think we're going to find out the truth of it is one to three percent, and this is what the number is, are man-made pollutants that contribute to this. One good volcanic eruption in the surface puts way more particulate material than man will put in it in a year. So, Remember, nature is way bigger than we are. We have things to do because we're not doing it right. A lot of the things that we put in the atmosphere may not be responsible for ozone. Why I don't object? Because the particulates we're putting in the air are poisoning us in lots of other ways with nanoparticles so small they're absorbed even through the skin. And they are altering life on the planet. We do need to think about this all differently. We can be good stewards. We can have development. We can do all of this differently than what we've been doing.